the first setup step you need to do is, is align these two in a parallel manner. Disregard the prism for now. Um, make sure the telescope is loosened down here with this knob and just move this around while looking through here until you have it lined up. So in other words, 180 degrees around. It's off. Uh, back over here, well, first of all, tighten down the, um, the telescope screw so that the telescope doesn't move back and forth anymore. And then loosen up the turntable, which is back here. And then you want to rotate the prism, not the prism, but the whole table. The prism is glued to the table until the goniometer is reading about 252. When you have it positioned as such, have your partner shine the light through the slit, and then you want to put your eyeball around here. What you're looking for in this face of the prism, um, the face that's closest to you, stop. All right, you want to put your eye about right here, and you're looking through this face of the prism, and you're trying to find the image of the collimator right here but then it's not enough to find the image. You want to see it in this face, and then you want to look perpendicular to the image. And that's, that's difficult, but you'll eventually see the prism. And boy, it's a beautiful sight. So put your eye about right there, then you're gonna s loosen the telescope, make sure the table is tightened, loosen the telescope, and bring the telescope in front of your eye until you see now, if your head is in the right position, you should be looking at that face of the prism, and you should be seeing the collimator's image right here in the face of the prism. Then it's a tough job to move your head around until you're looking perpendicular. Now I'm going to change the focus of the camera so that you will see the, um, the rainbow. Isn't that pretty? There's gold in them there, hills. Now when you put the spectral source in front of the the slit, you won't see a rainbow anymore. Instead, you'll see individual lines. Now, your eye is going to see more than the camera right now. Um, further to the right, does that make sense? Um, you should be seeing more lines. There should be four lines for the hydrogen, um, six or seven for the mercury. We're just seeing two right now. Now, when you bring the telescope in front of your eye, um, you'll see the, the whole spectrum. I have to move the camera to see just one other line, but for hydrogen, you'll actually see the four lines. For the rainbow, there was colors in between these. So again, you should see four lines, or at least three for hydrogen, um, and six or seven for mercury. Now the next step is difficult. It's step four in the lab manual. Now, with the telescope locked and the turntable unlocked, you're going to rotate the turntable slightly, and in effect, you're turning the prism. I'm going to take the turntable through a clockwise rotation. Notice the red line shift to the right, which means less angle of bending from the original, and then it's going to bounce and go back to the left. And remember, this is a constant clockwise rotation. Rotating rotating there it bounced keep on rotating and it goes back so I'm going to turn it counterclockwise and you'll see it's we want to get it to the far right as possible the far right is misleading though what we're trying to affect is that the original light was going through the collimator like this and then it's being bent towards us the least amount of bending is what we're looking for and that's by the orientation of the the table so I'm rotating the table until I get it as far right. And have your lab partners rotate the table too until you're all in agreement with that minimum position for the prism. Now from a different view, finding that minimum angle, right here you want to lock the telescope, and then right here unlock the turntable, and just gently rotate it one direction and gently rotate it the other direction, and you should see that red light changing its angle. It's going straight out, but through the refraction in the prism, it's being bent at different angles depending on the orientation of the prism. And there's some orientation that allows that red line to bend the least. 
that minimum angle of deviation setting is what we're looking for. Okay, the camera. After you've set the minimum angle, fix the rotating table by tightening the screw, and then you're just going to simply want to loosen the telescope and center the red on the telescope hairs. When it's centered, you want to read this value right here. You're going to use the vernier, or the goniometer, that's just a vernier on an angle. This right here is an arrow. Okay? It's not a one, it's an arrow. And there's your measurement. It's 209 degrees. But don't think of that as the, the angle from the original. It's not 209 degrees bending, okay? That's just the position of the telescope. But it's a little past 209. And the way we know the value is we look at which one of the marks lines up. And as best I can tell, it's the third mark. What, what mark is it? One, two, yeah. The third mark looks like it lines up the best. So that means it's 209.3. And then you're just going to move the telescope a little bit until you're centered on the next color. And read that angle marking and then so on and so forth. Now at the beginning, remember, you set this turntable at, you remember near step one, you had the light coming straight through and, and you saw the light here? Well, we've changed the table orientation since then. So you need to bring the telescope back around and line it up with the original light and then take a reading with a goniometer. You're going to take that value and subtract the red angle marking over here. So the difference between these two will be the angle for the red and the next color and the next color and so on and so forth. 